Hey everyone, welcome to Render Spaz Tips. This is tip 01, and uh, the reason why I'm going to call this tip 01 is because it's the first tip that I'm having out of this series, and this is uh, going to be the ambient occlusion pass. And this is a really cool looking, uh, uh, well, this provides a very cool looking effect when you use it through uh, like Photoshop or After Effects or whatever post program you use. Um, having this ambient occlusion pass really brings out the image. Uh, whether it's a car or it's a product, uh, product shots, 3D rendering, even even buildings, anything. It can be anything. Um, and if you add this whole ambient occlusion pass, it really enhances the uh, the renderer, okay, or your rendered image. So uh, what I'm going to show you right now is uh, I just want to show you a quick example and how you get this ambient occlusion. So what I have right now is uh, just a I rendered out car here with um, this just as is okay and I could say well you know what this looks really good it still does like you know it's it's got shadows it's actually not that bad it depends on uh, how your light work is uh, for the um, the lights you add but uh, in this case I could still get some definition out of this so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm using V-Ray for this but you can actually it does not matter what 3d software you use or what 3D rendering engine you're using, you can always get an ambient occlusion pass. And so the way I do this with V-Ray in this case um, is uh, we go through our settings here. Actually, yeah, in the settings tab. I believe it's in the settings tab. Or no, you know what? I'm wrong. Sorry. Um, if you go to the global switch switches, okay, uh, you'll see an override material. And what this does is um, if you apply just one type of material, so say I want to apply <clears throat> a V-Ray material here, okay, it's just a gray material. I might put a little bit of reflection to it, and then what I'll do is like a 17, and then just, just give us a little bit of shine, it just helps a little bit. Okay, just a little bit, dull it up, about 5.8, it's good. And what I could do is I could take this, you know, I can call this clay, and I can take this and bring it over into the material override. But in order for that to happen, you have to check that and then just drag it over. Okay? Uh, yeah, an instance is fine in case because if I want to, I could always change the color around and then it will just affect here, okay? And then when you don't want it on, you just turn it off and you go back to your color map your color version of this uh, render, okay? So if you click it on, and now I hit render, okay, check this out. Right now I'm actually, uh, I'm not using any uh, showing samples or GI, so this is just going to be, this is just going to kind of render as is. What I'll do is I'll pause the video here just for a second. Okay, so I'll just unpause here for, for a sec here just to show you guys that uh, what we have so far. And you can see that it's just a grayscaled clay, gray clay image that's going to be, uh, we're rendering out here over on top of the, um, the color map. So we're going to need two versions. We're going to need the color map, or the color, sorry, the color uh, render here, and then we're going to need this clay render as well. So what will happen there is we're going to combine these two in uh, in the Photoshop, and then you're going to see the effect there. But right now, this is we're going about this a little bit wrong. So what we have to do is stop this, and um, we don't want the background to be involved. Okay, so I'm going to hide that, and um, the ground. We either could leave the ground in; it doesn't matter. Or what we could do is, if you're using V-Ray or if you know with your uh, depending on your rendering software is that we need to get this a, a shadow mat okay like a mat does a shadow that puts the shadow out but doesn't um, it pretty much has the received shadows but it uh, completely it's not in the render at all besides it just has the shadow okay of the car so <clears throat> I'm just gonna go over the V-Ray properties and I'm gonna say negative okay on the alpha here So negative one, and I'm going to affect the shadows, 
or sorry, I'm going to direct light the shadows and affect the alpha, okay? From there, I'm going to also say I want it to be a matte object. So this is going to completely erase, uh, it's not going to render out the floor, but it's going to leave the shadow that the car casts on, okay? And I'll pause this video and I'll show you those results. All right, so as you can see now, we have uh, finished our ambient occlusion pass here, and you can see that um, we've got some really nice definition of the car, okay? It's all grayed out, and you can see where our shadows are gonna appear. So you can kind of just imagine the, the kind of effect you're gonna get here. And if you look in my uh, alpha channel, you're gonna see the shadow, okay? Okay, so now that uh, we are finished with our two passes, uh, we're now in Photoshop here, and what we're going to do is we're going to begin to add our ambient occlusion pass uh, that we've rendered out in a PNG form, okay? Uh, I'm going to just take this, and I'm going to shift and drag over, okay, over our, um, our main pass here, okay? Um, it's going to make that a layer real quick. And now that, now, we, um, now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our overlay. All right? You can already see huge difference here. All right? So this is our original, and this is with the overlay of our ambient occlusion pass. Okay? I already enhanced the image quite a bit. So let's see. If I go to uh, 60% here real quick. Right now, what I can do with this is I can adjust the curves of our ambient occlusion pass. And this will give us just a little bit more definition. Okay, and I can I can kind of just go in and find the really good spots. Okay, maybe I just want a little more shadow. Okay, and also another way you can do this is you can go over to image mode or adjustments and you can go to levels and you can also, instead of using the curves, you can use the levels and <clears throat> that changes some things around as well. Okay. Hope you get the drift, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So what we used to have, and now with the the ambient occlusion, okay. So you can see a huge difference, okay. If you look even over, let's go to 100% here real quick. Let's say let's just go 100%. Okay, and maybe it's just a little too much, and you can also use the opacity and just kind of get a, a mix. You know, maybe I want to go about you know, 60%. There we go. Yeah, now you can see the color of the paint comes out. Um, just a lot, a lot more going on. Looks a lot. Uh, looks, looks nicer. It just, just really stands out. So. That's it, guys. That's uh, that's the first tip that I have. I uh, hope you can use this with your car renderings or your whatever rendering you're doing, type of type of work, whether architect or product. Um, you can you can always use the uh, the clay pass, okay? And that will just really bring out your your image a lot more, um, and also increase uh, you know just the the definition of the models or whatever it is that you're trying to um, accomplish. So thanks guys and uh, see you again.